in the last stream, we were working on setting up our very first apiary, which has allowed us to massively increase the production of, at the very least for now, these nine bees, to the point where we're actually producing way too many combs, and as we found out in the last episode, our centrifuge setup currently cannot keep up. All of these are working all the time at max speed. We've upgraded our modular routers to make sure that they are not the bottleneck, but we just don't have enough processing power here to get through all of these combs, let alone all the combs that we're gonna get from subsequent apiaries. Between streams, what I've gone ahead and done is I've emptied out all of the bees from the bee apartment complex over here. I have them all in my inventory and I've moved over all of the remaining uh, nectar blocks that we currently have over to here. So we've got uh, obsidian, astral, coal, blaze, nickel, marble, copper, and lapis. And we've got space for one more bee here as well. And so the first thing I do want to do in today's stream, somewhat counterintuitively, is I do want to get another apiary, uh, along with another apiary storage. I wanna get this up and running so we can start producing those combs, even though we currently are not going to be able to process them. The reason for that is that, as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, the big thing that we need to work on now is power, because in order to get the upgraded centrifuge, we need a lot of these centrifuge casing, and to get these, we need a bunch of power. Each one requires 250,000 redstone flux, and we need quite a few of them to build the three by four by three multi-block required for this multi-block centrifuge, and we might want multiple of those multi-block centrifuges to really start pumping through our resources. To get more power, I think we're gonna go with the reactor from the power mod. That's the same mod that adds the energizing orb and the energizing rod here. Now, in order to power this reactor, we need uraninite. And uraninite is acquired from centrifuging radioactive combs, which we get from a radioactive bee. And so what I want to do is I want to set up this second apiary. I want to get the radioactive bee in there so that we can start generating some of those radioactive combs so that when the time comes that we do have the reactor, we have some uraninite ready to go and ready to give us the power we need to then get the centrifuges up and running. So in order to get the radioactive bee here, we need to have a steel bee pollinate and then fly over a radioactive waste barrel. The radioactive waste barrel here really isn't too difficult to make. It's four steel and four lead. The only problem is that we don't have any lead. Thankfully, the lead bee doesn't seem too difficult to get. We need one cobblestone bee and one andesite bee. The only one we don't have there is the andesite bee, but thankfully, the andesite bee is one of those bees that we can get using the jars. There's a DNA for it. And so real quick, if we uh, craft down our clay here, we can get yet another empty DNA, and we can whack that over into our chest along with, I think, just one andesite, although let me quickly check that. It is indeed just the one andesite, and thanks to the fact that we upgraded our high temperature jar with a beacon in the last episode, we should now be able to make this andesite be very quickly. Eight seconds is not bad at all. The cobblestone bee should be over here in the system, and whilst we could put this into the burrito over here, I think it's still gonna be faster for us to do it the old fashioned way. The only reason that is faster is because of the fact that we do have the uh, the bee box. If you didn't use the bee box, the apiary breeder would be faster because the apiary breeder does produce fully grown bees. You don't have to deal with the baby bees at all. But for us, we should be able to just throw down our cobblestone bee. And then at that point, I have to go and find my DNA spawner, which I think we did lose. I'm not actually quite sure how we lost it. I put it down in the smeltery. And then when I broke it in the smeltery, it got destroyed. I don't think the smeltery is capable of like melting the DNA spawner. So I'm not entirely certain what happened there, but either way, it is uh, thankfully not too difficult to make a brand new one. And so over here, let's get ourselves a andesite bee. Boom and boom. And then we'll give you one andesite and we'll give you one cobblestone. Perfect, we'll get our bee box ready, which uh, does have a redstone bee in it. And we'll pick this guy up and put him back down, perfect. So at this point, we'll go and put the lead bee into our new apiary box. I have forgotten to add torches to the top of our apiary setup over there. Between streams, I did basically duplicate the first apiary setup twice more. Uh, there are no apiaries currently working there, but the box shape is exactly the same. And so back over here, what do we need for the lead bee nectar block? We need 
two andesite honeycomb blocks. I should have seen that coming. Two cobblestone honeycomb blocks, which I think we should have. We do, only just because we used a lot of those in the last episode. And then one bucket of honey. That should be fine. The next question then is andesite bees. Do those just pollinate on andesite? They do. That's actually pretty good for us. And so real quick then, what I think we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll steal this andesite bee from here. I'm gonna quickly go and grab another nether star using the soul sand, which we are now getting, thanks to the fact that our nether bee is up and running. And of course we have our wither skeleton bee as well, which is also providing a ton of wither skeleton skulls. That's going to allow us to very easily get another nether star, assuming we have enough power in here, which we totally do. We can then use that, of course, to get our new apiary up and running, and then we'll get the andesite down and the andesite bee down in that new apiary so that we can start getting those andesite combs. And once we have those andesite combs, which again, shouldn't take too long, maybe uh, three cycles in the apiary, given that you get eight at a time with the apiary, we can then quickly upgrade and get our lead bee down in there as well. And then again, once we have enough lead, we can make the radioactive barrel and hopefully get the radioactive bee. And a quick bit of crafting later, we now have another tier one apiary, which we should be able to put down right about here. Again, I think as long as I don't shift click, that does go down correctly, fantastic. I've also made another apiary storage, of course, to go right up at the top center. And just like last time, I've also made another one of these diamond storage upgrades to give us a bunch of space to hold all of the combs that we're going to make. So let's go ahead and get this andesite block down right about here. Let's also throw our andesite B down. Let's quickly open this to see if it is forming correctly. It is indeed. And then I don't think there's really any downside to us putting basically all of the other bees down here as well, because they're not really gonna interfere with the current bee that we have. They should just work alongside the current bee and then I guess slowly but surely fill up this apiary storage. And so, yeah, now we're just gonna wait until we have enough andesite combs here, and then we'll go ahead and replace that andesite B with the lead bee. And not too long later, we now have 24 andesite combs, so we can go ahead and uh, pick that bee up in just a second. We do need a, a jar for that. I've also replaced down all of the other bees. Those are all working away as well. And back over here, if we throw these in, along with the cobblestone block and the honey, that should be everything for the lead bee. Nectar block. Again, eight seconds is perfect. And so do we have a bee jar in here? We do indeed. Uh, did I put my lead bee away? I did, but it's in my box, right? It is indeed perfect. Okay, so let's take the lead bee nectar block. Let's replace the andesite bee nectar block. You gotta be very careful doing this in here because if you hit one of the bees, then all of the bees die. So I'm gonna be very careful and do something like this. We did lose a piece of andesite, but I think that's completely fine. And now all we need to do is just place down our lead bee and we're gonna kind of do, whoops, not that guy. I needed you, fantastic. And also let's do this. So now we need to wait for that lead bee to produce us enough honeycomb so that we can make enough lead to make the radioactive waste barrel, which he should do on his first deposit here, which is really only a few seconds away, I think. He's down here. We've got 400 ticks left. Once he's done, we should see some lead comes in here. We can then just process those manually and that's gonna get us the radioactive waste barrel. We'll then go ahead and I guess steal our steel bee who should be over in here. He is indeed. I'll take that guy and we'll obviously go and put him where he needs to be. I guess ideally we could do with another steel bee nectar block. I could try and steal the one that we currently have, although I'm fairly certain that we do have everything that we need here to make a second one. We need two blocks of steel and then we need uh, two blocks of iron honeycomb over in here with another bucket of honey. And that's gonna get us an extra steel bee nectar block, which I think is preferable over trying to pick up the one that we have, because currently if I try to pick that one up, I think the most likely outcome is that the nectar block just falls into the abyss. I could build a platform beneath it to try and catch it, but that seems like more effort than it's worth, given that we have everything to just get a second one here. Speaking of which, over here, do we have the lead? We do indeed, fantastic. Let's take that steel bee nectar block. Let's quickly do some crunching over here to get eight lead. And once we have the eight lead, that should be everything for the radioactive waste barrel. Nice. On its own, by the way, not radioactive. This is for mechanism. It's used to store radioactive waste uh, much later in the game. For now, all we need to do is swap out this for the steel bee nectar block. And of course, we'll place down our steel bee uh, just as soon as we sleep here, because currently our steel bee, I don't think is gonna be able to do anything while it's nighttime. Boom, we'll share this, we'll throw down our radioactive waste barrel, and then we'll just place down our steel bee. Like so, pick up the skeleton bee, I guess, for now. And we should see, momentarily, our first radioactive bee. And 
I guess we could kind of do with two of these, to be fair. And again, to be fair, we do actually have, we're going to pick him up temporarily because we do have enough lead here to make a second radioactive waste barrel. And so I feel like there's no reason for us not to do this. It's just going to allow us to get two radioactive bees, which as we saw last episode, does seem to be the optimal number of bees to have in the apiary. So that there's always one inside the apiary and then always one outside the apiary as well. There we go. Two radioactive bee spawn eggs. Good stuff. We'll come back and get the, uh, the steel bee in just a second. So these guys we're going to put down, of course, in our new area. I think for now, what I might do is I might take the marble bees out and kind of put those back into the, uh, the bee box here and just replace that with the nectar block for the radioactive bee. The radioactive bee requires, of course, the radioactive bee nectar block. This is two more radioactive waste barrels with two steel honeycomb blocks. Thankfully, we have all of the stuff to make that happen. We've got enough lead in here to make two more radioactive barrels, and we've got a staggering amount of steel honeycomb, so we obviously have enough here to make two more blocks of steel honeycomb. And so a quick bit of lead processing later, there are our two radioactive waste barrels and already over here we've got our two steel honeycomb blocks along with of course the standard block of honey should be everything for the radioactive bee nectar block nice so let me make sure i've got enough jars here to pick up all of those marble bees because ideally i don't really want any uh, bees whoops inside of the bee box i find the bee box works best when there's very few bees inside of it and so let's take the radioactive bee let's use that to replace the marble nectar block over here the twitch chat has made a good point here in that we could potentially look at using the exchanging gadget from building gadgets to allow us to pick up certain blocks with no chance of them falling into the abyss the only problem we have with this is that it does need to be charged and i think that currently we don't have any blocks that allow us to charge items for example these dynamos here don't have any kind of charging interface thankfully we do have a number of blocks in the pack that do allow us to charge items i'm pretty sure that any of the generators from power do have the ability to charge items so the furnator is a generator that runs on fuel so you could use that uh, the magmator is kind of the same as the magmatic dynamo we showed it a few episodes back it uh, makes the same amount of power but just burns it a bit faster uh, but there is also the uh, tinker table from the thermal expansion mod, the Tinker's Workbench, that is. And this doesn't seem too expensive. Two redstone and one gold for the flux coil, and then just glass, iron, and wood for everything else. That seems pretty doable. I would very much prefer to use regular Minecraft glass here. And uh, if we go put this down over on our power line, let's say right about here, I'm hopeful that we can then throw in the exchanging edge and it will start to charge. So real quick, if we go to options, controls, and then we type in a gadget, and maybe go to category here, we are looking for the settings menu. It's set to G by default. I'm going to change that to something that's not bound. I'm going to change that to numpad six on my keyboard. Basically though, if we take this, you can press uh, six while holding it. It brings up this menu. You can change the range that you exchange. We're going to stick to one for the time being. And then I'm fairly certain that all we have to do here is uh, take some dirt, shift right click on that, pick the dirt up, and then over in here, you can see that now when we hover over anything, it shows that little dirt icon. If I right click here, it's gonna use some power, but it's gonna swap the block that we're looking at with the block in our hand. Super nifty stuff. If you want to do a real large area, you could again, hold down your set key and then change the range to be real big. And then we could, for example, swap out this entire platform with dirt very quickly and easily. Pretty nifty stuff. And so for us, I guess what I should have done is I should have done that with the radioactive bee nectar block because it also uh, prevents us from dealing any damage to the bees, which would have been ideal. That bee is horrifyingly flashy, but this should now work and we should slowly but surely begin to get some radioactive honeycomb, which we can then use to process into, I think both uranium and uraninite. I think we get both of these from the radioactive honeycomb. We do indeed. And it's this uraninite here that we need in order to power our reactor. And we also need it to make the reactor blocks as well. So we're going to need a fair amount of that uraninite, hence why we're going to have both of these radioactive bees working full tilt to get us as much of that as we possibly can. And so while we wait for that and while we let that do its thing, we're going to come back over to here and we're going to look at actually getting the reactor from power. So as you can see here, there are many different tiers. We start at the starter tier, move up to basic, then hardened, then blazing, then niotic, then spirited, and then finally nitro. These are all the same reactor. They all have the same multi-block they all kind of work in the same way but the higher you go the more power you can generate now 
it looks like in this pack, we actually don't need to make the previous tier to make the next tier. Sometimes you need to have the reactor starter block in order to upgrade to the reactor basic block. Thankfully in this pack, that's not the case. However, we do need to get 36 of whatever reactor block it is that we want to make that tier of reactor. So if we want to make a blazing reactor, we need 36 of these reactor blazing blocks. If we wanted to make an Arctic reactor, we would need 36 of these. And so we've kind of got to decide which tier we want to start at. And the tricky part here, again, is that we have all of the resources to go all the way up to Niotic, which is kind of the third best and is more than good enough for what we're after. The problem with the Niotic reactor is that it requires these Niotic crystals, which require 300,000 redstone flux inside of the energizing orb. And so I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start with something a little bit more basic, maybe something like the hardened reactor, uh, because again here, each hardened reactor requires one hardened capacitor because it's four capacitors to four reactors. So it's a one to one. And so we're going to have to get 36 of these hardened capacitors. These are made two at a time. And so we need to do this recipe 18 times. And that means that we need 18 multiplied by four lots of energized steel, which is 72 energized steel, which is very doable. It's 36 iron and 36 gold, but we have to do that using our current setup. I think that should be fine. And in fact, between streams, I have uh, figured out a pretty nifty way to automate this using none other than, of course, modular routers. Specifically, this module right here, the regulator augment, is going to be crucial to making this happen. So first things first, we thankfully do have some routers, which is good. And apparently one router has already got some items in it. That is fine. And to make the regulator augment here, we need uh, two redstone comparators and some nether quartz. Between streams, I did make a fair bit more nether quartz using the uh, the same setup we did previously. So we got 39 in here. We definitely should, at some point before the end of today's episode though, get a nether quartz B, potentially into that third apiary once we have stuff set up because we desperately need more nether quartz and having to go through the process of grinding it and then jarring it every time is incredibly tedious. Either way, uh, we should now have, I think, basically everything we need to make this augment. And the reason that we need this is that the energizing orb is a little bit finicky in the way that it works. Specifically, you can't put in more than one recipe's worth of ingredients at any one time. So if I put in one iron and one gold, the craft works perfectly. However, if I try to put in two iron and two gold, nothing happens. It just won't work. And so if you're wanting to use the orb, you have to put in the exact right amount of items to make the one thing that you're trying to make. And so in our case, for right now, to make the hardened steel, we have to put in exactly one iron and exactly one gold. That is where the regulator augment comes into play, because if we hover over it here, it says allows precise control over how many items are kept in an inventory, which is exactly what we need. Now, I do think that I'm going to need one more modular router here. And so we'll go ahead and take this one. I'll put the pre-configured one back away and then we're probably going to want to get two more sender modules as well let me make a couple of pistons here and then let's see if we can't make two sender modules and i guess also a puller module as well the puller module here is going to be used to pull the final product out of the energizing orb the only downside to the modular routers really is that they can only hold one item at a time and so my thought process here is that we're going to have one of these routers put the gold in one of these routers put the iron in and then we're going to have one of these routers pull the final product out and so for that to work we're going to need at least one chest here that chest is just going to be for the final product that we're making and i think everything else should be fine we're also going to need actually one more of these regulator augments which of course means again two more redstone comparators which is six redstone torches boom and boom and boom Cool. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to have, let's say, this one on the left-hand side, put the gold in. So you're going to send to the right-hand side, we're going to put in one of these regulator augments, and we're going to set the number here to one. I just typed in the number one, and we're also going to, I guess we can whitelist gold, but it doesn't really matter because gold's all that's going to be in here. So we're going to put this in, and we're going to put gold in, and now it's going to put in exactly one gold ingot and no more if i take a gold ingot out it will replace it with exactly one gold ingot which is perfect we can then do the exact same thing on the other side here this time we're going to say to the left regulate augment one and iron again doesn't matter iron is all that's going to be in here like whoops not like that like so perfect so that's going to make us the energized steel as soon as the energized steel is made it's going to put one gold and one iron in because that's what it's been told to do 
Uh, now, of course, what we need to do then is we need to move that over and out into here. So what we're going to do there is we're going to take this, actually. And here we are going to whitelist the energized steel like that. And we're going to put that in here. And so now this should be pretty much automated. Whenever there's energized steel to be pulled, and also I think we want to make sure this is set to left like that, that's going to pull energized steel once it's made. And this is going to put in more iron and gold. Perfect. And so now we have a fairly automated system. We do, of course, have to put the iron and gold in manually, but the rest of that is basically good to go. Uh, real quick as well there, you can configure the cards that are already inside of the modular router. Uh, you'll notice I just did it right there where I pressed the N and opened up this interface. I didn't have to take the card out. It does say press N or middle click to configure. When I tried doing this by default, it didn't work. I had to go to options, controls. I had to type in modular and then go to category. And uh, this configure installed module GUI, it is set to N by default, but N is conflicted by default in this pack. So you need to type in N, go to key, and then get rid of any other key binding that's already set to N if it's not working for you or just change it to something else. So you hover over and press, I don't know, Q to make it work. But either way, it is much easier than having to pull the module out and reconfigure it every time you want to change the way that it works. And so, as I mentioned before here, if we want to get this reactor, if we want to get the hardened reactor here, we need to get 72 energized steel, which hopefully shouldn't take us too long. Other than the energized steel, we mostly just need some uraninite, which we should be getting over in here. We are, we've got almost two stacks of radioactive comb, which I'm gonna push to the front of the queue here. I'm gonna divvy this up amongst a couple of these centrifuges just to make sure that this is indeed getting processed kind of above all else. And uh, then of course we are gonna have to set up drawers for uranium and uraninite so that all of this stuff does have a place to go. On top of the uraninite, we really just need dielectric paste, which we've already got a fairly decent amount of, but I will also go ahead and uh, craft up just a little bit more just in case we uh, don't quite have enough. And not too long later, we have enough energized steel here, and we also now have a draw for the uranium ingots and for the uraninite, and already we're at uh, 56 and 90 respectively, which is to be expected. I assume that we are still kind of working through those. We are indeed, and again, I guess we can push even more of these to the front of the queue just to make sure we keep getting more and more. And whilst I was waiting there, I did get even more dielectric paste, and I made a couple of the components that we've already made. I made more of the dielectric casing, and I made more of these basic capacitors. And so we should, in theory, be able to go ahead and make 36 of these hardened capacitors here. We should then be able to take all 36 of these hardened capacitors and craft those up quite easily into 36 of these reactor blocks. And so thankfully, this reactor is actually self-building. Whenever you go to place it down, it will show you this little outline here. And we, for now, we're going to build this right here. You just right click it and it will place down all 36 blocks in a three by three by four orientation. Kind of the same orientation that we're going to use later for the multi-block centrifuge. And so once it's fully set up like this, we now have this interface and we can put a multitude of different resources into this reactor to generate power. So one thing that definitely confuses me, I'm not gonna lie, I do not understand how this works, but the reactor here has a generation factor. And you would assume that that in some way relates to the amount of power that it generates. I assume it does in some way, shape or form, but I have no idea how it relates to it. Because if we put uraninite in here, I think by default, it's not gonna produce that amount of power. Uh, we can increase the amount of power the reactor produces as well, by the way, by adding in redstone, coal, ice, which we don't currently have, but we'll look at getting in the future, and water. So if I put some water in here, the water thankfully isn't used. You only have to put it in the one bucket. We can also put in redstone down here, coal up here, and then we can put in the uraninite as well. And so this is gonna produce 13,000, 12,000 redstone flux per tick, which is nowhere near the stated factor of 840. I'm not quite sure how that number relates to the number that we gain here, but the good news for us is that we have gone from generating what? 18 multiplied by one, two, three, four, five, like 400 redstone flux per tick up to 11,000 redstone flux per tick very quickly. We do want to turn auto mode on. This will stop the reactor once it is full and then start it again once we get to 70%. So this kind of uh, saves us from wasting too much uraninite. But basically now what we should be able to do is we should be able to hook this up to our basic universal cable. Like so, you do need to connect it up to one of the four sides like this. And now this energizing rod that we have here has access to all 11,000 redstone blocks per tick. Of course, not particularly useful to the energizing rod specifically, but what we now want to do is we want to look at upgrading to the higher tiers of energizing rod. Uh, specifically, we want to go with Blaze next, and then of course, Niotic, aka Diamond after that, to, uh, to try and really increase the speed at which we can use our energizing orb here. 
And so we'll go ahead and we'll take these out, get rid of you, and we'll get rid of you, and we'll take the 46 Energize Steel that we have there. I'll take you out, and then we'll just kind of swap this over. So in here, we can just put the Blazing Rod. That's perfect. This, again, is going to work until it's done. And over here, we can just upgrade this module with a Blaze Crystal, and now it's going to pull the Blaze Crystals when they're out instead of pulling the Energize Steel, or as well as pulling the Energize Steel. And so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this running. While this is running, I'm going to go and quickly whip up a few more of these hardened energizing rods because we have so much energized steel now we should be able to make quite a few more of these i guess before we do that the first thing that we definitely need to do is that quartz beat because we do not have that much nether quartz and each one of the different tiers of each energizing rod does require a block of quartz so we need way more quartz than we currently have and so we'll take the block of quartz and to make the quartz b we just need the nether b which is perfect because we do have the nether b over here let me go ahead the quartz bee is going to need a nectar block as well. The quartz bee nectar block. Does that require nether honeycomb? It does indeed. That's fine. Nether honeycomb, we've got an abundance. So we'll take that. I'll craft that down into at least two blocks of nether honeycomb. And we can go ahead and place those into the jar. It also requires two blocks of nether quartz, which again is completely fine. So let's do this and this. Basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to temporarily get rid of the nether bee so i do need more bottles of honey for that thankfully we can downcraft these blocks into jars which is perfect then let's go ahead and do something like this let's grab our bucket boom and boom let's make sure we swap this out first because i always do it the wrong way around i'm after the nether quartz nectar block and start and then we'll use our exchanging gadget here to replace the nether bee nectar block with the nether quartz bee nectar block so again shift right click pick this up and then over in here we can just go ahead and right click i'm gonna pick the bee up first just in case it does fall through the world i don't think that it would but just to play it safe good stuff and then now we can go ahead and take both the nether bee nectar block with the nether bee and our block of nether quartz over to our good old-fashioned uh, pollinating station let's do one of these one of these and i guess one of these we'll go put him back where he belongs as well we'll also do a quick shear to empty this out and we'll also go ahead, of course, and do something like this. And I guess we might as well do two again, like we've been doing previously, just so we have two quartz bees to maximize quartz production. And boom, that's going to get us the quartz bee spawn eggs, which we can go and put into our apiary to start getting more nether quartz. And then, of course, we can use that nether quartz to make even more of those hardened energizing rods. Okay, so the nether quartz bees are up and running. They're doing their thing in here. And I did take some of the combs out here and I crafted them down into their block form and stored them for now over in our chests just so that we had enough space for these nether combs to actually start getting processed over in here again i've pushed them to the front of the queue and i've gone ahead and made four more of these hardened energizing rods and so now if we do something like this we should be able to start massively increasing the speed at which these uh, blazing crystals are made because now they're going to go five times faster than they did a second ago one thing we could also potentially do is look at getting some speed upgrades into these uh, modular routers because you'll see right now it's taking a little while for the modular router to pull out the blazing crystal once it is done thankfully we already have speed modules and again we can make even more of these very quickly we've got an abundance of all of the resources required to make even more of these 27 might be overkill but let's do something like this uh, like this and like this Cool. It only has to pull one item at a time, but now we should see that item pulled out almost instantaneously, and these crystals are now coming in much, much faster, which is good. And so now it's essentially just a case of doing the exact same thing again here if we wanted to upgrade to the blazing reactor, because to get the blazing reactor, we would need to get uh, 36 of these blazing capacitors, which means again uh, 72 of these blazing crystals. Right now we're at 17, although they are coming in faster than before, but I think that honestly, I don't know if we need the blazing reactor just yet we're not using this reactor to its capacity and not even close and so i think before we get the blazing reactor i'm probably going to first focus on just upgrading the energizing rods here because if we wanted to upgrade our five hardened energizing rods to blazing energizing rods that's going to more than double the speed at which we can use the energizing orb and it's only going to cost us 10 blazing capacitors which is just 40 blazing crystals which were already halfway there so i'm kind of just going to slowly but surely start working towards this because we obviously also don't have to upgrade them all at once we can start by upgrading one of them and then upgrade the next one upgrade the next one and we can kind of work our way through like that until they're all upgraded and then from there i'll probably also go straight up 
to the Niotic as well. That just requires the uh, same amount of diamonds. Again, we've got uh, closing in on a thousand diamonds here, so that is not going to be a problem for us whatsoever. We are a little low on dielectric paste. Of course, that is also fine because the dielectric paste is very, very cheap over here. I've not made any more mana, and uh, we have made multiple more stacks of dielectric paste using the mana we already have. Good stuff. And so, yeah, I'm going to quickly upgrade all of our energizing rods. Oh, that's my bad. I did only need uh, 20 blazing crystals because, of course, you get two at a time. I said 40 before. I only needed 20. And so, in fact, I think we already have what it takes to, uh, to upgrade all of these. If we take them back over to here, we should just be able to do something like this. And assuming we have enough quartz, which we should, we've got 18 blocks. Fantastic. Again, is it a compacting drawer? So we don't have to worry too much about crafting the blocks, which is good. We just need five of the dielectric casing, which we should hopefully be able to make. Boom and boom and then from there let's go ahead and see if we can't upgrade all five of these to the higher tier one two three four and five nice you do have to click those in manually because they do uh, store their power and they have like a different metadata it's a bit funky but either way down here let's go ahead and just plop all of these back down onto our line and now it should be over twice as fast as it was previously and again we should still have more than enough power because these are only doing 300 rf per tick each we have got five of them that's 1500 the cable can do 3500 and the reactor can do 11000 and so yeah this should be just doing things much faster than it was before to the point where we could look at doing the diamonds next the diamonds do get quite a bit expensive in that the niotic capacitors are only made one at a time not two at a time so here we would actually need 40 niotic crystals and so i guess it's actually not worth doing just yet simply due to the fact that the centrifuge casing the whole reason we're doing this is actually cheaper than the niotic crystals and so instead let's get a bunch more of these waxed machine frames right now we've got the one uh, ideally we want to get quite a few of these how many can we make that's going to be limited by how many steel blocks we have we've got 47 steel blocks which i think is more than enough i'm not exactly sure how many we need we might need 36 i don't know if the inside of the centrifuge is hollow if it is then we probably need 36 much like we do with the power reactor if it's not hollow we might need a few more but either way we should have more than enough power to start making this happen let's go over here let's swap this out for wax machine blocks let's take okay this is too fast now i'm trying to take the blaze rod out but the uh <laughs> modular route is putting them in too fast and as soon as that's done we'll add that to the whitelist over here you'll see it's substantially faster than it was in the last episode which is very nice indeed before it was going to take almost five minutes per now it takes less than a minute over here we'll add that to the whitelist and kind of just let that do its thing and not too long later we now have 40 centrifuge casing which i think is almost the right amount the task is to do 35 but you do also need four more in order to make the centrifuge controller here which is required for this we just need really one more centrifuge which we can make along with iron bars another redstone comparator of course we do let me make i'm gonna make a stack of these redstone torches just so we don't have to keep micro crafting those every time and now that we have nether quartz coming in that's not a problem boom and boom perfect so i think that we are now pretty much good to go so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and take the distributor module out of here and i might have to just move this kind of entirely for the time being let me get rid of this and i'm going to pick up i think a lot of what's here i think we no longer really need the magmatic dynamos we'll pick those up because they're making an insignificant amount of power considering the amount of power we're getting from our reactor we can move the tinker's workbench that can be moved elsewhere we might even end up moving this entirely we probably don't need this lava generator here i might move the reactor to the center and maybe look at automating the sending of uranite over to the center and then uh, there's also other stuff that we can kind of move i have put my x away let me go ahead and grab that uh, for example uh, a lot of the plastic making stuff here we can also move as well let's get rid of you let's get rid of you and you and then we'll get rid of you we can move all this stuff uh, elsewhere for now i'm just thinking about putting the uh, the new centrifuge kind of smack bang in the middle of this platform so i'm going to put it down kind of right about here i'm going to move some of this energy cable as well because i think we do want to put this down on top of this pre-existing pipe because much like the previous uh centrifuges i'm also fairly certain that this is going to produce honey as well and we're going to want to extract that honey going forward interesting that the um that the fluid extractor has kind of affected that block there it looks like it's a, a piece of wood very odd indeed i am fairly certain that the centrifuge controller goes here one block up and then we just build out the rest of the three by three by four and that is going to look something like this but i've got too many pieces so i'm going to assume that this is a full multi-block like that it is cool and so now what we should be able to do is we should be able to pump power into this 
I don't know if we have to pump power specifically into the like front of the reactor if i break and replace this can i power this also we can get rid of these now as well uh, but can i power this from the side is my next question i can cool okay just to it's kind of update there that is now working and so now the benefit of this is that it can do three comms at a time and the secondary benefit i guess is that it's much faster per comm and so not only can it do multiple, but it can do them faster than before, which is good. And so all we really need to do, I guess, is we need to get our modular router back down. And for that, we could do with maybe some kind of building blocks here. Do we have any ladder? We don't, although I'm fairly certain we should be able to build some ladder. And then can I put this ladder down on the back of the reactor? So could I do this? I totally can, nice. That's gonna make our lives a little bit easier in terms of getting up to here. We'll do this. We'll go ahead and place down a torch so we don't get any unwanted mobs spawning up here and then what we'll do is we'll put the polar module back in that's going to pull uh whoops that's not the right modular router that's the one for our acacia if i put this one down is this the right one this one will do we'll put in the polar module that's going to pull from over there perfect and it looks like it's exactly the right height which is good and then we just need to get a sender module we can kind of uh, do away i guess with the distributor module maybe uh, we should probably definitely put in our stack upgrades and maybe even some speed upgrades in here as well but uh, for now i think just a standard sender module sending down into the centrifuge should do the job just fine so once again do we have what it takes to make this of course we don't we never seem to have enough pistons that is fine again i'll make a few of these i don't want to make a full stack because we are a little low on uh, wood of all things but let's do this and then we'll put the sender module configure that to send items down and we're going to put this directly into here and so that should start filling up all three of the slots. And now we're going to start processing these faster. However, it's probably still not fast enough because we're just making so many combs. Now, in terms of upgrading to the elite centrifuge, I think this is something that's probably not going to be too difficult for us. To do it, we do need to get, again, uh, 39 of the elite centrifuge casing, and then we need to upgrade the uh, old centrifuge controller to the elite centrifuge controller, which doesn't look too bad and uh, we don't actually need as much this time because we don't need to do four elite casing for the controller we just need netherite which we should be able to get a ton of because we've got so much uh, ancient comb hanging around we've got 304 ancient debris and we've also got 43 plus blocks of ancient comb because we've got uh, even more ancient comb in here as well the only tricky bit really about this is the one million redstone flux let me do a quick calculation here if i uh, go ahead and throw these in we're gonna start smelting these up this is gonna get us the netherite scrap which of course we can then use to make actual netherite which is ideal and then once we've got enough netherite to make a block of netherite we can then look at doing this so this takes a million fe and we need to get i think 36 of these so that's 36 million redstone flux over here we have five of these blazing rods and these can do i think 300 uh, energizing and i think these can do 300 rf per tick each they can so we've got 1500 redstone flux if we need 36 million redstone flux if we divide that by 1500 that gets us to 24,000 ticks we can divide that by 20 to get us 1200 seconds which divided by 60 is 20 minutes so it would take 20 minutes to make all of the elite casing assuming we had all of the items ready to go inside of our current setup here which is a little bit of a way to go but isn't tremendously bad although i guess what we should probably do first is just look at uh, getting those diamonds again we need uh, 40 of these so that we can get 40 niotic crystals and use those to get the niotic energizing rods which again more than doubles the power transfer and therefore would more than half the speed so it'd take less than uh, 10 minutes to do it if we had the niotic crystals which we definitely should be able to get in uh, in a fairly short period of time but i guess what we also want to do as well is probably just look at getting more of these as well now uh, it does back up on honey this one has a tank for it and so what we want to do is just grab our wrench once again and we should be able to extract from the bottom of this we might have to break and replace the pipe although i'm hoping that we can kind of just oh, we can't quite squeeze in that way can i get down and do one of these i totally can nice good Slash home gets you back. Uh, by the way, if you've not done it, slash set home allows you to set a home point. And then when you type in slash home, it will take you back to that home point. There was a small cooldown, but it's not really too much to worry about. So now the honey is still getting processed, still getting turned into blocks, which is good. Uh, we can go ahead and replace some of those uh, cables very shortly. And so, 
yeah, I think this is faster than the five or six blocks that we had previously. But again, of course, it is nowhere near fast enough. And so real quick, let's see if we can't get uh, 40 of these Niotic Crystals, upgrade these to Niotic Blazing Rods. And then I think we'll start by making maybe two more of these. I put one here and one here. So we've got three of these multi-block centrifuges, all trying to process the current cones. And if that's still not enough, which I have a sneaking suspicion it might not be, we can then look at uh, upgrading to the elite centrifuges. Okay, so not too long later, again, we now have 40 of the Niotic Crystals, and I've gone ahead and basically taken everything that we had on this platform down, because I don't think we want any of it here now. I've left these tanks here for now. We might need the lava or the plastic, but I've got rid of the jars and I've moved everything else. I'm sure we'll reset that up somewhere in the not so distant future, but for the time being, I wanna focus on getting our resource production up and running over here. So what we should now be able to do is grab our five blazing energizing rods, and it should just be a simple shift click to, uh, to upgrade these here. So uh, we need to get, if I want to upgrade these, uh, these Nautic capacitors. I believe I need 10 of these in total. And then from there, we should just be able to uh, kind of place these in and just upgrade them all to Nautic. And then at that point, having five of these that can each do 700 redstone flux per tick, that is going to take us up to 3,500 redstone flux per tick, which is unfortunately a little more than the basic universal cable key can actually carry. This can only do 3,200. Now, I don't know if there's much we can do about that. I guess we could look at using the cable from power again. We should have some starter cable. We could probably upgrade that fairly easily to basic cable if we get uh, some basic capacitors here. And then I'm kind of thinking that we could use this cable basically just for the energizing rods. It's uh, the same again here. It's not too hard to upgrade these through the different tiers. We just need all of the different power resources to do it. And yeah, this seems kind of fine. We need more energized steel, which apparently we're completely, oh no, we have energized steel. What am I, oh, I'm missing the uh, capacitor, of course, sure. Let's do this, let's do this. That requires more dielectric rods, that's fine. Let's do one of these, that gets us the hardened energy cable. And then we don't need to go up to blazing. Do we have any blazing crystals left? We do, we've got quite a few of them actually. And so I feel like there's no reason for us not to do a quick upgrade here like this and go for the blazing cable. These can do 18,000 redstone flux per tick, which I think what we'll do here is we'll kind of have this run from here around like that. And then I'm fairly certain that these can work diagonally through the blocks. I'm also fairly certain you can do something like this as well. So if we really want to cram them all on, I think that should work. And I guess one way for us to test it would be to just grab another diamond here and then just whack that in and, uh, and see if that does go a fair bit faster and, uh, and see if it does all connect. It does. Cool. It does go quite a bit faster as well, which you love to see. Cool. So... Real quick then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the exact same thing we just did a moment ago. I'm going to try and get another two centrifuges. So for that, we basically need to get 80 more of these waxed machine blocks, which means we are going to need 80 blocks of steel, which we don't have. However, we do have a ton of steel honeycombs, and we've got even more of them over in here as well. So I guess we'll go ahead and push those to the front of the queue. I don't think, after looking into it for a minute, I don't think we're going to have anywhere near enough um, kind of time to make the upgraded centrifuge, the elite centrifuge that is. Because if we're gonna make 36 elite centrifuge casing here, that means that we need 36 netherite blocks. 36 netherite blocks multiplied by nine is 324 netherite ingots. And then we multiply that by four for the amount of netherite scrap that we need. That means we need 1,296 netherite scrap in order to make that happen. I started smelting it over here, but just the amount of time it's gonna take us to smelt that up, given our current smelting capabilities, I think, is, uh, is kind of gonna be just too long. I guess we're a fifth of the way there, and I did put ancient honeycombs at the front, so we are now getting more ancient debris, but again, that's only gonna get us another fifth of the way there. We still have the other three fifths to go in terms of comb processing and then in terms of smelting, so I think we're gonna have to hold that off at least for a future episode, but I think we should be able to, uh, to fairly easily get ourselves at least another two of these regular centrifuges as soon as we have enough uh, steel to do so. Okay, so a little while later, we now have three of these multi-block centrifuges, each uh, behind the previous one. Uh, all of these are set up correctly. They all have power. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reuse the distributor module that we got earlier. I'm going to uh, quickly wipe it. And then we're going to use this to uh, distribute all of the combs between all of our centrifuges. So if we do this, this, and this, I should be able to put that in here. And that should distribute the uh, combs between 
these. Now, right now, we're actually out of range on that apiary over there. I also do actually want to set this up as well. Right? I want to get that connected. Uh, oh, can I not connect more than one? I might not be able to connect more than one. That's fine. We can put a second. In fact, I have a second one uh, right here. Would you look at that? Let's go ahead and use this one to do this. I think this one will be in range. This one here won't be in range. However, we do have the ability to make range modules. I think we want the range up module here to increase the range on this puller. If I put those in there, that's going to increase it by, I think, four blocks. I think it's one for each uh, range add-on that you add. And so hopefully, this is now in range. It is. Nice. And uh, we can put this in as well. That's going to pull from hopefully both of those. Fantastic. And those are going to get distributed around. Nice. And so now this is kind of working. We do also need to uh, change uh, this distributor module because right now it is not pulling from everywhere it needs to pull. It's kind of vaguely pulling from the middle of this centrifuge, but let's uh, change that. And we'll just have it pull from all three controllers. Again, I do think range upgrades are probably going to be needed here because I have a feeling that some of those might be out of range. Although, to be fair, the, uh, the range on this is 24 blocks and that's not 24 blocks away. So never mind. I imagine it actually might be completely fine. How is this doing though? Uh, it is not pulling anything. And that's because I need to once again change it to transfer into router. Of course, I wiped it, so it needs to be reset up. That's fine. So into router, and now it's pulling all of the stuff. And we've got the stack upgrades and, and whatnot. So I think that's all good. I think everything's being pulled in. Nice. So there are little ways that we can uh, increase the efficiency of this. I think we'll look at in the next episode. But for the most part, I think this is looking pretty good. I did also make some more Niotic Crystals. We've got 40 here as well. Uh, and so I do think that we can probably, real quick, to wrap up today's episode. I think we can probably upgrade this reactor. Not that we really need to. We are producing way more power than we need. But if we, uh, and we don't even need to tear it down, actually. I keep forgetting that we don't need the previous parts to make the next tier of parts. But uh, if we go to a reactor here, uh, I do think we probably have what it takes here to make the Niotic Reactor. Never mind, we don't. I think we have what it takes to make the Blazing Reactor. I did make uh, 72 Blazing Crystals, but um, we're going to need 140 Niotic Crystals to make the Niotic Reactor because, uh, again, the Niotic Capacitors are made one at a time, whereas the previous tiers are made two at a time. So unfortunately, uh, for now, we're going to stick with this one, but we're really not too far away, actually, from being able to upgrade this. In fact, if we put some diamonds into the Modular Router, uh, we're only going to need about two more stacks of Niotic Crystals to get us to that Niotic Reactor, which is going to produce a ton more power. This produces about 11,000 at max. It varies depending on how much power is in this, but maximum, I think it can produce about 11,000 RF per tick. And it says that the generation factor is only 840. The Niotic Reactor has a generation factor that's over triple that. And so I have a feeling we're going to get over 30,000 redstone blocks per tick from that Niotic Reactor, which again, currently isn't necessary, but going forward, I think that kind of power is going to be something that, uh, that we do want to work with. And so it's definitely going to be good to have. But now though, I think that is going to do it for this episode of Sky Bees 2.